Hi viewers, welcome to my channel Eclectic English with Roma. This is lecture one. Here I have taken the first poem of poetry section of Flamingo, textbook of class 12, prescribed by CBSC Board. The title of the poem is My Mother at 66, which is written by Kamla Das. Let's quickly learn something about the poetess. Her name is Madhvi Kutti, and we can say Kamla Das is the pseudonym of uh, Madhvi Kutti. She was born in a conservative family in Kerala on 31st March 1934. At a very early age, she was married, and her marriage, her married life was an utter failure. Due to that, she succumbed to many extramarital affairs in search of true love, but in vain. Her poetry is the true expression, I would say genuine expression of her pent-up emotions. And she is referred to as a confessionist. Most of her poetry has autobiographical note. It is a reflection of her lonely heart. And her poetry is the unabashed self-revelation which is written very sincerely, spontaneously and uninhibitedly. Now let's uh, come to the title which is My Mother at 66. So my Mother. So it is Kamla Das's mother. Right? She is going to talk about a very sensitive and emotional relationship with her mother. She and her mother is at the age... Uh, 66, that means she is inching towards her uh, old age uh, that, that sooner or later is, uh, you know, uh, the departure of a soul for, uh, to, to heavenly abode. So the objective of this poem is to understand the fears in the lives of human beings. There are many fears in our life, fear of, fear of death, fear of losing our dear and dear ones, fear of loss of separation, etc, etc. And here the poetess is, is talking about the fear of death and fear of separation. And then we will, uh, of course, analyze and appreciate the poem. So we will read the whole poem, we will paraphrase it, and after that we will analyze. So in analysis section, there will be, uh, I'll talk about the setting of the poem, mood of the poetess, theme of the poem, and then I'll talk about the poetic devices as well as the structure of the poem. Kamla Das is bold and confessionist, and she strip teases her mind to express her autobiography. As I have already told you, there is autobiographical note in this poem as well. She is talking about her mother, that sensitive relationship of a mother and daughter. Now let's read and understand the poem line by line. Uh, before that, I would like to tell you that this whole poem, the structure of the poem is one sentence. We can say it's a lyrical idiom. Uh, it is separated by commas and uh, in the end there is a stop, there is a full stop. So it's, it's one flowy sentence. This is uh, uh, Kamla Das's type of writing. Now let's understand. Kamada says that driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning. So the poetess had been at her uh, parents' home and now she was driving back. She was, she was going back to her workplace and her mother is there. Her mother is sitting in the car beside her. And uh, in that journey, she noticed her. She looked at her mother. She says, I saw my mother beside me, doze, open-mouthed, her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. But soon put that thought away. So here uh, there is a sudden realization in the mind of the poetess she, she realizes that her mother is inching towards death. She, she, when she looked at her mother, she noticed her face, which was doze. Uh, we can say which it means drowsy. Her face was open-mouthed. Maybe uh, she was, uh, she was um, uh, in the temporary sleep and her, her, uh, her mouth gaped. And her, her face ashen like that of a corpse. Corpse gives a very anemic 
look at her face mother's face was also giving a very pale look which which was maybe because it was because due to illness or uh, maybe due to uh, the you know emotions of losing the daughter or it was uh, lifeless or blanched at that time and this uh, Uh, sentence ashen like that of a corpse so her face face of the mother is compared here to that of a corpse so this is the poetic device used which is simile simile is the comparison established by using the word like or as here she realized with pain that she was as old as she looked so the mother as well as the daughter both had realized that uh, you know and and that realization was a bit painful and the realization was that mother had grown old uh, gro growing towards old age means that that the person is of course inching towards death sooner or later uh, it's an inevitable um, truth that will come right so just in order to uh, you know um, avoid those thoughts just to uh, that, that is why she uh, suddenly looked outside just to put those thoughts away so uh, put that thought away and looked at young trees sprinting so we can uh, imagine the car moving one side and uh, the trees uh, the, the trees outside uh, on the road it seems that trees are sprinting the trees are moving uh, backwards so that gives the Uh, you know uh, liveliness outside so there is a comparison the poet this is uh, trying to establish the comparison that uh, inside the car there was sadness um, you know and outside uh, there was there was uh, you no know, life there was vivaciousness so she compares her old mother and that uh, that sad atmosphere inside the car to that of the liveliness outside trees sprinting trees cannot sprint so here trees are personified personification means when an inanimate object is given a uh, human uh, attributes so trees are sprinting trees are running in uh, in reality trees are not running but it seems that trees are running because the car is uh, constantly moving the merry children spilling another comparison another contrast she establishes here is the merry children spilling out of their homes the merry children spilling out of their homes so children children you know that uh, that uh, Uh, age, um, uh, you know, uh, childhood is full of life, full of um, you know, vivaciousness, and the children are are as lively as as a squirrel. So here they are, they are happily spilling out, means coming out of their homes. But after the airport's security check, so here when she was in the car and she was she was looking at her mother, and at that time she tried to. Uh, contrast the uh, situation inside the car and and the situation outside but after that once uh, she was about to reach the airport there she had to do the necessary things like airport uh, security check and all and after that of course uh, kamla das had to had to uh, board her uh, plane so she uh, she was standing a few yards away from her mother and once again that uh, you know that uh, fear haunted her that fear of losing her mother overpowered her and again she wanted to get, uh, you know uh, look at her mother maybe it was a it was the final uh, final meeting maybe once she will be back again to her hometown she she she'll not be able to meet her mother maybe all these things were uh, you know uh, haunting her mind so she again looked at her mother this time again her mother looked uh, you know uh, seemed to her as when Uh, small um, as uh, and pale and the comparison established here again it's uh, through simile through the usage of poetic device simile as late winter's moon so uh, you know late winter moon winter's moon is devoid of um, exuberance devoid of uh, light it, it seems little dim and uh, so was the mother she compares her her mother's face uh, to that of uh, the late A winter's moon, and felt, and at that time she felt that 
old familiar egg. Once again, I'll say that that old familiar egg. This this egg is quite familiar. This pain is familiar. This this fear is familiar to all of us. This fear of losing our loved ones. So she. Uh, after that, she says that again she felt that old familiar ache, my childhood's fear. So what was her childhood's fear? That you know every child want to uh, spend time uh, with uh, her parents, his or her parents, and no one, uh, no one ever imagines uh, that a day will come when parents will uh, depart, uh, parents will leave us, right? So my childhood's fear. But all I said was, see you soon, Amma. So all, all at that time, what she could say was, see you soon, Amma. Maybe she was hiding her emotions. She was putting that big, brave front and she wanted, she said, all I did was smile and smile and smile. So smiling here, you know, repetition of this word smile here is that she was trying to hide her emotions and, and trying to portray towards her, to, to her mother that yes, she is happy and she will once again meet her mother. Now, uh, next uh, we will uh, we will analyze the poem. Start. Now, uh, come to the analysis part of the poem. Setting, I've already told you. Setting is in the car, and the uh, poet poetess and her mother they were moving to the airport. Mood of the poetess is sad and anxious. She is afraid and insecure. Theme. Theme of the poem is of advancing age and the fear of loss of separation, as I have already discussed. It's just a quick uh, recapitulation, I would say. Now the poetic devices, though we have already discussed, but once again I'll tell you, one was simile. And simile, first simile was the comparison of her mother's face to that of a corpse. And another one was the uh, comparison of her mother's face to that of late winter's moon. Then next, poetic devices, metaphor. That was children spilling. Children spilling with this this metaphor metaphor is a direct comparison so this this comparison means children spilling out of their homes means it it, it represents joy joyousness and vitality next is personification trees sprinting so trees came out sprint so here trees are given human attribute so that is why it is personification next is irony the the atmosphere in the car is compared uh, to the liveliness outside so we can say the green trees racing while other while uh, mother looks like that of a corpse next is contrast the world replete with activity inside the car it was contrasted with near lifeless mother so there is euphoric uh, euphoria outside that uh, liveliness the joyousness outside as compared to sadness inside Next is tautology. It means useless repetition. So, in, in, in first um, stanza, I would say the poetess says, I looked at my mother and again she repeated the same thing. I looked again at her. So, this is tautology. Uh, then I'll talk about the structure of the poem. So, it is lyrical idiom. I believe I have already talked about. And it's a single sentence which is punctuated by commas. So, the uh, viewers, that's it about this poem. And um, see you soon uh, in my next lecture. Till then, enjoy.